Beautiful, perfect. Okay. And we have some attendees uh, coming in. And Wonderful. Oh, Amy. Hi, Joanne. Nice to meet you. Diane, nice to meet you. Pamela. Yeah, welcome everyone. Oh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session of uh, Fit and Strong, uh, presented by Southampton Hospital and Tracy Sullivan. And uh, we'd like to thank Southampton Hospital and Tracy Sullivan for being able to present this series for us. Uh, this series is every Friday, uh, running through February 10th. And the classes are being recorded. And if you would like to see an older episode or check back uh, on today's class, uh, the videos get uploaded on the East Hampton Library YouTube page. And uh, we will email the video to everyone who has signed up for the class uh, in case somebody misses the class. And uh, without further ado, I'll turn over this morning's class to Tracy. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Good to see you all now. Let's see, Margaret, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Leanne, Joanne. So wonderful to see you all. Let me just get my screen here. Um, I want to introduce myself quickly to those of you that are just joining us for the first time. As Stephen said, my name is Tracy Sullivan. I am a cancer exercise specialist a functional aging specialist. I specialize in youth exercise programming and I have been a trainer and a client. In fact, I have been a private trainer for the medical team at Stony Brook Southampton Hospital here in New York for many years. <laughs> um, during uh, the pandemic, the physical therapy department and the wellness department at Stony Brook Hospital and I created this Fit and Strong program designed to stimulate and improve the health of the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system works very closely in supporting our immune system. So we all understand the benefit of having a healthy immune system. The lymphatic system is a series of vessels throughout the body, and those vessels are connected to lymph nodes that are strategically placed throughout the body. Sometimes they're in large clusters, sometimes they're in smaller bundles. When I say strategically placed, there's purpose for that. The lymphatic system relies on muscular contraction to move the fluid, known as lymph. Now, the lymph fluid travels through the body, collecting uh, viruses, infection, cellular waste, uh, cancer cells, and transports those cells to that nearest lymph node and deposits that... Um, whatever cells they collect into that nearest lymph node. And then the fluid itself filters through the lymph node and travels back through the body and in a continuous loop, so to speak. So if there's damage to the lymphatic system uh, through injury, through surgery, if there's damage to the system in a case of a cancer diagnosis, that cancer cells are discovered within the lymph nodes, sometimes radiation is a treatment, Sometimes uh, surgical removal of one or many lymph nodes can result in an interruption in that flow of lymph fluid. So the fluid over time, if there is a blockage or an interruption in its path, the fluid over time can build up and build up as it continues on its loop. And in a longer period of time, the fluid can back up. And so the purpose of what we have today the exercise programming is specifically designed to encourage the muscular contraction, to have the muscles shorten and lengthen and relax under tension and release, to press against that lymphatic fluid, I mean lymphatic vessel, excuse me, to help move that fluid through. So if there is a backup, that little bit of movement can push through, clear it up, so, so to speak. Um, and if there is no backup, it's a great way to ensure the health um, and flow of our lymphatic 
fluid to maintain health in our immune system. So if you've been prescribed a sleeve or a compression garment, please wear that. Um, it's an important part of your, your journey and it's an important part of this program we, to be safe as we move through the exercise. I just wanna make it clear that everything we do today is low impact. Everything we do today has purpose. And I was just explaining that recently that this, the benefit to this, this program is that in fact, it's a program. We always begin with an educational, informational segment before we move into the exercise program. So everything has makes sense. Um, feel free, if you need, to reach out to me. You can, there's a chat box. You can send a message or a question if you have any, it's perfectly fine. Feel free to put your mic on and say, hey, Trace, I have a question. I'm happy to answer questions. That's why I'm here. So I just want to reach out and see if anybody today um, if you are going to stay with us today and remain seated, please let me know now so I can um, heads up, give you some modifications of what we can, um, what we can do today. Because everything has modifications for less intense, for seated, and everything has modifications if you want to be more advanced. But again, the big picture and the big focus here is everything has purpose. So let's talk about the purpose. Okay, I have a specialty in functional exercise. Functional exercise has purpose. In fact, by definition, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines function as related actions contributing to purpose. Everything we do today has purpose, okay? So the purpose today is to discuss how exercise can be functional. And that's our exercise component today. There are six factors, six facets, I should say, six facets to function in the human body and the human movement. Okay, and it all stems around physical function. So we have the neuromuscular component, which involves coordination, okay, motor control, movement, um, using your own strength to move, propel forward, sit, sit stand. Uh, reaction time, which is um, quite, quite important to prevent slip and fall, being able to control your body movement if there is, a, a, and react, I don't know, let's pretend you're crossing the, the road and it began, uh, the traffic light changes, you have to react quickly and move out of the way of traffic or just hustle that little bit to get to the curb. Um, it also requires proprioception, and proprioception is the ability to be aware of where your limbs are. When you can't necessarily see them, technically defined by limbs in space. So that's that's helpful and functional in a purpose for in the evening or in the middle of the night. If you were to get up and find the restroom, you need to be able to move in darkness or in semi-darkness. Okay, we have a balance component to function. Balance, of course, center of gravity control, trunk stability. We all may understand that. Multi-sensory, using your eye gaze for balance. Um, the sole of your foot, stepping on uneven terrain, stepping on loose terrain, gravel, sand, pebbles in your driveway. Um, and also balance controls um, is controlled quite a bit by posture. And good posture will keep that center of gravity uh, in, in, the, in the trunk of the body balanced. Okay, so we also have mobility. Mobility, as I mentioned, sit, sitting, standing, walking, obstacle negotiation, being able to walk perhaps um, through an area where there may be trip hazards, uh, being able to negotiate simply over a, a small rug or a, a, over a curb, trying to think of examples, a bath mat on the floor. Um, again, that that's all connected to agility, the ease of movement as you travel, walking gates, uh, let's see what else we have. Cognitive, which is a big factor in my background with exercise programming for survivors um, and the aging process as well. We can become forgetful. Um, cognitive um, and emotion is connected together for memory, memory loss, confidence. Um, sometimes after surgery or if you are, have a diagnosis, it can emotionally impact your well-being and you may lose interest for a, little, a short while. 
Um, so cognitive and emotional connection is, is um, something that we focus on in this program. Quite often, I'll, I'll just call out, what rep is this? How many more? To, to, to keep the, keep the uh, connection there. Let's see what else. Motivation, of course. That's what I'm here for. So then we have uh, the musculoskeletal component of function. The musculoskeletal component involves power, strength. Uh, let me see what else we have here. Yeah. Power, strength, speed, and joint integrity. Unfortunately, sometimes with surgical procedures, with injuries, we lose range of motion. We have limited movement, especially in the shoulders, in the shoulder joint, the hip joint, hip replacement surgery, knee replacement surgery. That's all, again, part of this programming as well as the health of our lymphatic system. And one thing I want to stress is the endurance factor. Okay, endurance means the ability to go the distance, so to speak. So when we do our cardio segments, um, we, we go longer. As we move through it, we go longer just to create that, that ability to sustain movement for a longer period of time. It helps us get strong. And speaking of cardio, cardiorespiratory is the last facet of physical function. Cardiorespiratory involves aerobic activity, which is the process of breathing process, the breathing process that's sustainable, okay? We can become winded, we become slightly winded, but we can sustain that level of, of function and exercise. But the anaerobic state, where there's not enough free flowing oxygen, where you become <gasps> fire breathing dragon winded, that's the higher end of cardiovascular function. And we do not go to that level of intensity in this program. We follow the American Heart Association regulations and statements for cardiovascular intensity, which keeps us at that 30 to 40 percent of intensity. Okay, so you're in good hands here. You're in good hands. Uh, I don't think anybody responded that they're, go they're going to stay seated today, so that's fantastic. I encourage you to stand with me. I encourage you to stand, and when we do stand, posture matters. We'd like to have our body weight in our heels. Okay, that just distributes the body weight evenly between both feet. And it may not be the prettiest move, but I encourage you to have your feet shoulder width every time we do something, unless we intentionally go wide for a wide base. Okay, it's, it's we have our feet too close together or too narrow. We have that topple effect. Okay, we wanna keep a nice steady base to, to what we did today. So let's talk a little bit more about the lymphatic flow and how we will encourage that movement. So being stable like this, being sedentary, listening to me discuss function, that fluid is still traveling, your body is still working, the lymphatic system is still moving and grooving, and it can tend to pool in the midsection. Now, if, you, if you're not moving, so it doesn't have that muscular contraction to encourage that flow to the extremities, which in this case would be our arms and hands and our legs into our ankles and feet. So if uh, even if you are compromised in the torso, if your lymphatics are injured from surgery or, or treatments, radiation treatments um, for, for cancer, the blockage is in the, in the midsection of the body, that fluid may pool there even more so. So we encourage a deep belly breath and we always begin with a deep belly breath and feel free to do that throughout the day. It doesn't have to be just today, just right this moment. You can do that if, when you wake up in the morning. You can do it after after sitting a while at your computer or reading. Uh, just we just feel got a couple of responses. Uh, a few people would just like to remain seated. Okay, fantastic. That's not a problem. Everything we do today, um, as I mentioned, you can stay seated. I'll modify for that. So let's let's have a deep belly breath together. Okay, the deep belly breath will flush the torso. All right, encourage that flow. And then we'll stimulate those larger bundles. Stephen, if you have that PDF, do you, you have that with by any chance? Sure, sure. Would you okay, like to put can, it up at the end? I could. Oh, let's, can we put it up now? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up. Yeah, if you could put that up now, that'd be great. And I'll get my second chair.
Okay. Waiting on that visual. I just wanted the visual for you folks to see the, the area in the bodies that we will target and encourage that pump to stimulate that fluid. Um, so let's, let's begin with a belly breath while we wait for the visual. Okay, so if you're new to it, stay with me. And if, you, if you're very familiar with it, of course, you know where to go. Feel free to begin anytime you like. If you are seated, I encourage you to have your knees shoulder width. Okay, and I encourage you to come off the back of the chair so we have that strong posture. We're not slumping and slouching. We want to have that muscular contraction to support that core. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, here comes the visual. Fantastic. Now you can see on the right side how the lymphatic vessels travel through the body, down the sides of the neck, across the collarbone, down through the axilla, which is located in the armpits down the midsection of the body. You see that there? Um, you can see how the lymphatic vessels travel through the arms. Now there are small bundles of lymph nodes in the crease of the elbow. The biggest visual that you can see right here uh, is in the groin and in the crease of where the leg, when you lift your knee, where the, 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 um, in the <laughs> I lost my train of thought, in the groin. So a basic walking movement, climbing stairs, that action of lifting your leg, sitting and standing requires that tipping from the hip and that hip hinge to encourage that flow from those large bundles right there in the groin. So if you've had lymph nodes removed in, within your groin, in the midsection, um, in the armpit, in the axilla, you may be affected on one side more than the other. Uh, we encourage and I encourage a full lymphatic flow. So we don't focus just on upper body if that's where you're compromised. We, we, we absolutely recommend lower body, midsection, upper body, head and neck stimulation for the lymphatic fluid. Thank you, Stephen. You can take that down anytime you want. Wonderful. All right, so let's begin with our belly breath, folks. Okay, so as I mentioned, if you're seated, please come off the back of the chair and sit evenly on your sit bones. Okay, we don't want to have a slouchy posture. And if you're with me, let's stand together. Feet under shoulders, belly button directly under the collarbone. Okay, so we have a nice tall posture. So we want to place one hand on our chest, one hand on our belly, deep at the bottom of the belly. So when we inhale, we want to make sure the hand on the chest is steady. If you breathe into, into the upper respiratory, this hand will lift. The breath is here. We want to encourage the breath in the midsection. So as we breathe in, push your belly against the bottom hand and hug back, okay, to stimulate the abdominal wall to contract. We'll do three or four. And if you're new to it, you may need three or four or perhaps more to get that sensation. So as we inhale, the belly presses out, the diaphragm flattens, and the lungs expand, and your abdominal wall reacts and contracts and then relaxes. So there's that muscular contraction necessary for that flow. Good, I'll do profile. Notice my lower hand as I breathe. Breathing deep into the lower respiratory. Fantastic. Let's take our fingertips and split your fingers any, any way that's comfortable. One in front of the earlobe, one behind. We want to make soft circles, more of a capital C stroke on the side of the neck. And it's there's no pressure involved. It's simply fingertips connecting and maybe a skin glide, just gliding across the top of the skin, or better yet, just a little skin stretch make a little circular pattern. And then we're going to encourage that flow of fluid through a self-massage down the side of the, each side of the neck, across the collarbone, if you could recall that visual, where the vessels travel. So if you have a compromised lymphatic system in the throat, lymphedema, the, the filling of the fluid can travel up to the face and head. So this is a great way to encourage that fluid in a downward, direction, but also if you're not compromised in the head and neck, it's a great way to give yourself a little massage. <laughs> it's 
Find one, take one arm up and let the cup of your palm, palm of your hand, cup that armpit in little circles. Now, if you have uh, the lymphatic system in the armpit and the axillary region compromised, you may notice there may be tightness or scarring. Little circles and look at me closely, huh? I'm just just little movement. Again, there's no pressure. We want to just help flush that area. And then we'll get to the other side. And again, this is something you can do for yourself throughout the day. That's it. And now in that groin, right here in that crease where the, where the hip bends. So if you're seated, okay, hands just on top of the, of the thighs. Slide into that where the panty line would be. If you're standing with me, same, of course, the same place. But now the circular pattern swoops up. Again, we want to bring that fluid up. Gravity can help drain it towards the feet and ankles. We want to bring it back up. So let's clear out those large bundles of lymph nodes here. So that fluid, when we move, can come right back up to that midsection. Filter through the heart and then go about its journey through the body. Fantastic. Okay, so let's have a little warm up unless anybody has any more questions. I'm happy to answer any more questions. I'm gonna put my hair back. Now we're in, it's go time. <laughs> okay, so for our warm up today, we have, we'll hit the cervical area, which is the head and neck region. We'll hit the upper body, arms and shoulders, upper back. We'll hit the lower body, the larger muscles and the legs. And then between each component, we have that lower pec cardio segment. Now, if you're seated, I'd like you to, again, come off the back of the chair, okay? And if you're seated, please have your knees shoulder width. Now, if you're standing with me, knees shoulder width, feet directly underneath, okay? That's just as important. Okay, again, we want that, we want that stable base for our movements. So let's do it together, everybody. Standing tall, shoulders back and down, chin is up. Simply take your face to the right side and stop. Now take your eyes. Now the chin is over the shoulder, but it's not connected. So keep that gap, that two ingredients gap. So you have room to breathe. Now turn to me, spine back to neutral. Let's try that again, we'll make it better, okay? Face over the shoulder to the right, eye, eye gaze follows. Now your opposite shoulder has a little pressure in your thoughts towards the floor. Releasing that side of the neck. Fantastic, come to me. Good, spine back to neutral, we'll do the same on the left. So turn to the, your left side, take your eye gaze and see what's there, maybe the wall, the window, a photo. Opposite shoulder presses down. Pay attention to the muscle stretching on the side and back of the neck. Look forward to me and take your eye gaze. So important. Okay, we don't want to get dizzy. Come again, we do it twice. And maybe now you notice this time that the back of the neck is not as tight. It's kind of the idea. <laughs> Look to me. Now, depending on your range of motion in your neck, we're going to just take our head and tip it back. Eyes go up and pause. Now lift your chin another half inch if you can manage, just to get that stretch in the front of the neck and a big circle to the right. Take your whole face, your whole head, take your eyes all the way down, all the way around, all the way back up the left side, a big 360 degree turn. Or if you're a visual learner, find, imagine a clock face, go from 12 o'clock midnight, now come to the left, all the way down, as you come down, do not let your chin and collarbone connect. Remember, we want to keep that space for breath. We don't want to cut off our breathing as we move. Good, eye gaze forward to me. Take your shoulders with a bent elbow, two big shrugs up and down. So slowly getting into that shoulder, shoulder sockets. Our first segment of cardio is coming. Right foot will lead. If you're seated, just simply march and tap your heels. I'm going to take the iPad down so you can see it's slightly better. If you're seated, you march in place and just tap your heels. And if you're with me, you stand and tap your heels. Okay, so let's do eight marches right here. Eight, 
and seven and six and five. Now we land quiet. Stand tall if you're standing. One heel on the right, one heel on the left. Good. Eight marches, eight and seven and six. Now look at my hands. They're relaxed. Four and three and two. Two heel taps, one here and one here. Keep going, kids. We have four sets of these. So this is round three and six and seven and eight. Tap and tap. Once again, eight and seven and six. Stand tall, sit tall, breathe and smile. It's okay. <laughs> and tap and tap. Just going to come close to you and check in on breath. We should notice a difference in our breathing here. Okay, I'm gonna keep the iPad there so you can see more of my full length, okay? Let's have upper extremity preview. So take your hands forward. And if you can imagine, take them wide, flip your palm up. Now give me a big roll and let them land. Good. Okay, so coming forward once again, shoulder level, flip your palm up, go wide, open the heart, and a big roll. Now, how big is that roll? Entirely up to you, okay? Inhaling, flipping the palms, stretch the fingers wide, opening wide, big circle. Maybe you start to notice a warming sensation. Let's do one more. Through the upper back and shoulders, that warming sensation, that's blood flow. That's good. That means those muscles are requiring blood flow right now to perform, good job. Two big shrugs right here, up and down, up and down. Now we have our second cardio segment, left foot leading, so eight marches, ready? Eight and seven. You can do marching man arms if you want, or just nice and easy. Left side heel, right side heel, eight marches, eight and seven and six. Everybody chin up, four, and three, shake out your shoulders, tap and tap. Are we okay? Keep going, kids. Seven and six and five and four and three and two and one. Now we want to tap lightly and we want to march lightly. No impact allowed. So let's pretend the entire floor is covered with eggshells. Nice and easy. Yeah, tap and tap. So now after our second round of this cardio, Respiratory, you may notice yourself more windy. That's kind of okay, okay? <laughs> it's kind of a plan. Let's hit the lower extremity. So if you're seated, again, come off the back of the chair. And if you're with me, hands to the hips. Everybody lift one heel and knee comes forward. Looks like this in the side. And switch. One heel at a time, like a little pony. So if you had shoelaces on your whatever footwear you have, push it forward. So now we're encouraging that knee bend, a weight distribution change. If you're standing, that's it. Let's get two more, I'm gonna do eight of these. All right, now if you're standing, two heels down. If you're seated, two heels down. Everybody slide forward with your hands down to your knees. If you're in a chair, it looks just like this. If you're standing, it looks just like this. That's the way. And now as you come up, slide the fingertips up the thighs, shoulders up, back, and down. I'm going to do it again. And this time, this round, I'm going to do a chair. All right, so if you're standing, hands to the hips. If you're seated with me, shoulder width, one heel lifts, one heel lifts. Shoulders are relaxed. That's it, getting a little bit of motion in the ankle joint. Four. Three, again, that warming sensation should start to happen in the calf. Good, both heels down, Hand, tip forward at the hinge. Whoops, hang on guys. My screen went blank, there we go. Hip fo tip forward at the waist. As you come up, slide the fingertips. Remember, we want to encourage that slide to the top. Four more rounds, everybody. Eight little ponies here, and if you're standing, looks just like this. If you stand and you have the benefit of the hip stability, five, and that's it, and six, and seven, and eight. Come forward. If you're with me standing, it looks more like an umpire stance. Profile looks like this. Okay, come on up. Oh, that's it, one more round. Eight of these here. 
<laughs> so the kneecap travels forward, knee sh shoelaces travel forward, okay? And one, good, both heels down, everybody come down. This is a hip hinge. This is a, in exercise programming, it's a mid squat. I'm gonna move the chair out of the way. Back to the last segment of cardio. Eight, and seven, and six, and five, and four, and three, and two, and one. One heel, one heel. Go again, eight, and seven. Stand tall, breathe, smile, open the hands. Heel and heel. Switch to the left side knee. Eight and seven and six and five and four and three. Don't bang your feet, please. Remember the floor is eggshells. Nice and light. Now identify the sole of your foot. Imagine it like the base of a brick. All four corners land. Good job, everybody. Good job. If you have water nearby, grab some. Okay. How did that go? The sensation of breath leak is where we stay and maintain that intensity level. All right, if anybody has questions now, speak up while we have a moment, grab your water. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so let's target the upper extremity limb drainage technique. All right. So remember how I mentioned function and cognitive ability work well together? We're going to play along with that today. So as we take our hands forward, like we did earlier, in an exercise program like this, this is called a front raise, a forward raise. My functional training wants me to explain to you that this is a movie do every day, how you shake out your sheets, how you um, make your bed in the morning, how you um, go at, the, at a pool, flip the towel onto the chair, okay? In a clinical term, medical terminology, this is shoulder flexion. It's the same move. Okay, so it helps promote range of motion in the shoulders. It helps promote core stability as you take the weight of the arms forward away from your center of gravity. And the slow twitch fibers in the trunk of your body have to support you and hold you upright. So remember we did this, the palm flip. Every time we flip our palms, we're going to add one to it. So we have to think about it. All right, and every time we go wide, we're going to add one roll to that shoulder um, socket. Okay, palms up. Now, if your arms become heavy, bend the elbows more. Okay, I will check in at repetition four. I'd like to get to six repetitions if we can. Okay, always know you are welcome and absolutely not to worry if you want to sit one round out or do three reps and sit the rest out. Just, just. Wait till we catch up for you, okay? Let's stay together. I'm gonna to stay standing for it and I'm gonna bring my iPad back up. Sorry for that. Here we go. Feet on the shoulders, body with heels if you're standing. Shoulders back and down. That's it. And if you're seated, who remembers? Off the back of the chair. So you're sitting tall, okay? So hands together, everybody. Shoulder level. Looks like this from the side. Flip the palm once. Go as wide as, as wide as you can. Now big roll. Up, back, and down. Well done. Come on again. Arms forward. Flip your palms once. Palms to the floor. Twice. Stretch your chest. Two big rolls here. How big are your rolls? As big as you want. And come on down. Breathe in right here. Lift. Three flips, three. Now this is a palm flip in common language. Good, come wide. In the clinical term, that's a pronation supination, three rolls. Activating the muscles in the forearm to, to contract and relax. And again, muscular, muscular contraction, here comes four. You may notice that warming sensation in the forearm. You may notice a warming sensation in a side that's more compromised. Yeah, that's that muscular contraction right there. That warming sensation, remember, it's blood flow. That's it, the muscles are calling on, on the, the heart to send oxygen and nutrients through the blood so it can continue to perform for you. Now we're doing on rep four. All right, if you need to sit a rep out, go ahead. This is rep five. Five. 
So the side looks like this, four, three. Now, as we move through the set, you notice we hear longer. There's that duration, intensity, endurance. Yeah, five, up, back, and down, four. Now, pay attention to my shoulders. I'm not shrugging. Look here, this is incorrect. That's incorrect. See the difference? Shoulders are down, two, and one. Six and final rep. Who's with me? That's it. Six, sitting tall, five. Maybe on this set, you start to notice the lower back engaged, that warming sensation. Yeah, build strength in that lower back. It's working hard right now. Here comes rep six, opening wide, collarbones lift. Maybe we need to bend the elbows more. Maybe you need to make your circles smaller. If you're with me, get them as big as you can. That's it. Four, soften your fingers. Soften your wrist, five, and six, and come on down. Yeah, shake it out, wiggle it out, jiggle it out. There we go. Should be warmth here, warmth here. You should have warmth around the entire shoulder muscle, across the upper back, even across the lower back, you may notice it's warmth. Okay, so let's hit the, let's hit the lower extremity. Now, if you're standing, if you're standing, I'll preview first what we're going to do, and then I'll do the entire set seated. So we have that seated option for everybody, especially for those that tune in to the video recordings um, down the line. Okay, so seated today, we have the four ponies. Remember, we did the four ponies. Okay, then we have a double heel lift, two heels lift. Now, if you're standing with me, pardon again, the iPad, Shifting. So the pony posture looks like this from the front. Profile looks like this. Seated or standing. The heel lift standing looks like this. Okay. The heel lift seated looks the same. Okay. And then if you're standing, a low option would be toe to the floor, turn the knee to the side. Toe to the floor, turn the knee to the side. Okay, it's a quarter turn. This kneecap remains forward. This kneecap travels. Imagine the range of motion and the movement in the groin against the lymphatic vessels and the lymph nodes in the groin, inguinal lymph nodes. Now, if you're seated, posture looks like this. We have four ponies. We have a heel lift. Okay, and we're going to take our knee like the formation of a rainbow up and over, up and back. So it's a bit of an opening in the hip. We tap lightly and we reset, okay? Questions, comments, speak now. Profile looks like this if you're seated. Off the back of the chair, ponies look like this. Two heels together looks like this. Up and as wide as your hips will allow. Okay, the focus and the goal is to promote the knee lift. It's easy to just cheat and step to the side, okay? I want you to come up and over. So the whole lower extremity moves as one. I'm going to stay seated for this just so we have that available to everybody. But if you're standing, hands on your hips. Four ponies, everybody, four and three and two. And one, now two heels down, lift your heels together. Quarter turn if you're standing, if you're with me, right leg up and over and back, left leg up and over and back. Four ponies, everybody. So every time we do the double heel lift, two heels at once, we're going to add one repetition. Okay, heels down. Now give me two of these, sit tall please, once and twice, right knee up, right knee over. If you're standing, you're in that quarter turn, or those of you that have been with me a while, you can do those hip circles. That's the way, four ponies, three and two. You can see the difference in my knee position. All right, here we go, everybody. Three heel lifts, three times, three and two. Stimulating that calf muscle. 
That's it. Again, up and over if you're seated. Up and over. Do you feel that sensation in the groin? That's the way. Left side lead, please. Four ponies. And three. And two. And one. All right, two heels down. Take a breather if you need it. Now we have four heel lifts. Four. And three. And two. And one. Okay, left side lead, up and over, like a rainbow with the kneecap. Land quietly, land shoulder width. All right, we're at rep five, everybody. Four ponies comes first. Shoelaces forward strongly. Yes. All right, two heels down. Let the ankles take a break. All right, here we go, five heel lifts. If you're standing, come with me here. Five, four, profile looks like this. Three, two, one. If you're standing, quarter turn, toe to the floor, turn out, turn in, switch, turn out, turn in. Good. Okay, I'll stay standing, everybody. Four ponies, oops, excuse me, left side lead. Four, and three, and two, and one. All right, stabilize, both feet on the shoulders, six and five. And again, everybody, your range of motion can be maybe a half inch. It's a weight shift to the balls of the feet. Three, two, and one. If you're standing with me, quarter turn, switching, quarter turn. Yeah, everybody, take your feet to the floor, toe down, and give your ankles some love. Roll your ankles. I'm gonna step away from the chair so you can see. Four ankle rolls. Good job. Four ankle rolls. Let the kneecap roll in a little circle. Let the ankle joint just follow along. Beautiful. Okay, everybody. Here we go. Here we are. Okay. Okay, so do we feel that warming sensation around the ankle joints, the small muscles in the feet, the calves? Yeah, we really opened up the groin. We're ready to move on. Okay, any questions? I'm just going to check in now and see if there's any questions. Speak up. I'm going to check in on everybody, those of you that are seated, standing, Diane, Diane, Andrea, Mel, Pam, Pamela, Virginia, Margaret. All right, everybody. So let's do a cardio focus. Okay, now the body's prepped. The lymphatics have been massaged and stimulated. The lymph drainage technique for upper body is completed. Lower body is completed. Now we just work out, shall we? A, a cardio segment today. Okay, seated. I'll show you in a moment. Standing. I'll show you now, and we'll just go through as we have done. We add one repetition as we move through the set to build endurance to stay cognitive, and to get stronger for longer, okay? So let's check on what I have here. Oh, I know what I have here. Okay, so I'll preview standing, and then I'll preview seated. I think I'll stay standing for this segment, all right? So standing, we have back to those marches. We have eight marches, right? Just like we did earlier, hands are relaxed. We want to avoid banging the feet. And then if you wanted less, Upper body. Excuse me, let me just take this iPad here once again. This is a better view, I think. We have eight marches, and it's a half jack stepping. And you can take your arm side arm. Okay, one. Eight marches, one. Eight marches, two to the side. Eight marches, two to the left side. In between each repetition, I want to have that little bit of that crouch hip hinge. Okay, and we come out, then we do the left side. Questions, anybody? Okay, so the hip hinge, important, collarbones forward. More important, chin above the heart. When we come forward to this, we don't want our head to drop below our heart. Okay, we wanna keep our chin above the collarbones. Tip from the hip, I mentioned earlier, it's a hip hinge, it's functional. Okay, this is how we, we reach into the dishwasher, into the clothes dryer, over the sink to wash dishes. Same posture, brushing our teeth. 
it has purpose and exercise. It's a squat. <laughs> okay. But more importantly, it's a strength training technique to bend. And if you're standing with me, get better and stronger at using your legs to lift the body. Okay. Using your legs to stand. So let's do it together, everybody. We have eight marches, a half jack, a crouch, eight marches, a half jack, a crouch. And seated will look just like this. Take arm, okay? And the crouch technique is a lift. If you do the hip opener, a half circle posture, but I really need to take the leg and tap the knee, all right? Okay, if you wanted more seated, you can, of course, come a little higher. Okay? Sometimes, okay. is one. We're not coming here. We're not coming here. That's talking your knee. Move the entire rim as one. So let's do it. Okay, everybody, move this chair. Here we go, kids. Eight marches. Eight and seven and six and five and four and three and two and one. Tap to the right. Crouch. How do we go? Left side. Eight and seven and six and five and four and three and two and one. Left side. Shoulder width with the feet. Crouch. Good. Right side. Eight and seven and six and five and four and three and two and one. Two times on the right. Once, twice. Crouch. Bend the knees. Now push through your heels. Good, left side, eight and seven and six and five. It's a basic walking gait. That's it, two times here, once, twice, crouch. Bending, lifting, push through the heels. Good, right side, eight marches. Now, if you're okay in your shoulders and you're cardiovascular, you might take your arms here, jumping jack, three. You are welcome to do that. Get that axilla pump. Crouch. Good. Left side. Eight and seven and six and five. Chin is up. Three, two, three. Half jacks on the left here or here. And a little crouch. Beautiful. One more round, everybody. Eight and seven and six and five and four and three and two and one. Four on the right. Four, three. Two, one, belly lifts when you stand tall. Hold that core up with you. Good job. Last time, girls and boys. And six, and five, and four, and three, and two. Four times on the left. Four, three, two, one. Feet on the shoulders, hip hinge, pull your belly up, stand tall. <sighs> Yes, everybody. Wonderful, wonderful. Hydrate, hydrate. Grab your water, please. Grab your water, please. Take a moment, check in with yourself. Okay, we should feel stimulated. We should feel warmth all over. We should feel, we should feel clearly that we have worked the body, but we should feel in a place that's sustainable, as I mentioned, okay? We don't get too, too, too intense. With, with the breathing. The breathing process is a fantastic way to check in what's happening with your heart rate, your blood pressure, your lung capacity. Breathy, all right? <laughs> Good job, you guys are great. Thank you so much for all of that. Okay, let's stretch it out and loosen everything up. And now that we did stimulate that lymphatic flow, of course, it will travel to the, to the trunk of the body. All right, so what we wanna do now is that again, disperse the fluid buildup in the torso of the body. So all this fluid essentially has a place to go. There's room for it to fit. All right, so if you are, are seated, take a moment, sit back, grab water. If you're standing, take a moment as well. I'll do the same, grab your water. 
Stay hydrated throughout your day, people. Okay, everybody take one toe down to the floor. I see people standing in the ankle. Yeah, just give it some love, huh? <laughs> yeah, reconnect that mind-body connection, that neuromuscular facet of function. The brain sends a signal. Do it again, one each side. The brain transmits a signal to the body through the neurological system to enable all that to happen. Look what we just did. Fantastic. All right, everybody, let's take our shoulders up. Inhale and relax. Ah, good job. Come again, inhale and relax down. Let's do two more, okay? Big breath in, profile looks like this, lifting and exhaling. Hands to the belly, one to the chest. All right, there we go, everybody. Breathing in, push into the bottom hand with your belly. Top hand is steady, or steady as you can make it. And keep going, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna discuss something for a bit. The breath, as I mentioned, if you're inhaling and going, <laughs> you still need time, okay? Every day's different. Okay, so maybe today's the day, you need to do six breaths to slow down. That's it. Let's do it, everybody. Bottom hand. Yes, fantastic. Okay, if you're standing with me, I'd like to stretch the back of the leg because we did do quite a bit of marching. Okay, it looks more like this shift your weight to one foot, opposite foot in front. Okay. And then all I want you to do is bend the knee of the supporting leg and drop your chest a half inch. Pull your toe up strongly. Step back so you can see. Hamstring stretch. And if you're seated, you can do the same. If you're seated, one foot forward, pull the toes up and tip forward. Remember, of the heart, we don't want to drop in. It's the tall posture. So one foot forward, pull the toe up strongly, tip from the chest, stretching the entire back of that leg. Yes, I'll stay seated for the rest. Why not come a little closer? All right, let's just do four big shoulder rolls right here. Elbows bent, inhale. So bend in the elbow, take some of the weight out of the limb. Okay, we don't want to encourage our to be send blood flow to the upper body, the arms, okay, because we're trying to slow down here. And exhale. Uh, I forgot to mention, but I think you know by now if you're seated, you're off the back of the chair, yes? <laughs> Good, okay, everybody relax. Chin to the right shoulder. Pause, opposite shoulder, a little pressure in your thoughts. And look to me. Let's do it twice, okay? Just like the warm up. Now, when we turn our face and head, we're not rotating the shoulders. There's no torso rotation. Collarbone stays forward. Belly button stays forward. Yes? Good job. Let's get the left side, okay? And maybe you can remember when we started class, maybe you remember how your neck felt when we did these. Almost an hour ago, 45 minutes, 40 minutes ago, perhaps. Yeah. Good job, guys. Let's just do four more big rolls right here. Up, back, and down. Just to loosen everything up. Up, back, and down. Nice and easy. We're slowing down, okay? Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> One more time, everybody. Hey, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Southampton Hospital, for supporting this program, creating this program. Thank you, East Hampton Library, for hosting us. We have a few moments, so if anybody had any comments, questions, or still feel the need uh, for more attention, please let me know. I'm happy to um, walk you through it. Okay, I guess not. Yeah. Right, hey, this is our third session. A six. Oh, here comes a chat. Let me see. Somebody comment. Somebody wrote. 
Thank you, oh, Andrea. Thank you. Um, I don't. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful to see you. Um, Andrea asks if there's a handout with the exercises I did today. There's no physical handouts. Uh, you can tune in to when the East Hampton Library loads this video to their YouTube channel. Subscribe to the East Hampton Library YouTube channel. You'll be able to uh, view all these classes. If you've been with me from the beginning in this series, you may notice that I do something different every week on purpose. Again, there's on purpose, okay? We do something different every week. So it, it, it keeps it and it hits and targets our body and the, the muscular contraction in a different way. I want to thank you all for coming. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. Let's see, Diane. The so fluid tends to gather in my ankle. Yeah, Diane, I highly recommend uh, ankle rolls as we did in class, the ponies that we did in class. I even recommend in the privacy of your mm -hmm. own home, if you were able to like to pine, which is on your back, put your feet up in the couch with a cushion and do those movements, ankle rolls with your feet off the floor. We just, mm -hmm. um, yep, okay, okay, we shut down. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, thank you, uh, everybody who is on uh, today's Zoom and people who couldn't attend today's Zoom will uh, also receive a copy of the video and we'll see everybody again uh, next Friday. Thank you, Tracy and uh, everyone for Zooming in and have a great weekend.